everyone and welcome. Um, this is our Let's Talk Trades webinar series and I'm your host Rosalind Scott and I'm the Career Consultant Case Manager for Coast Mountain College. Uh, this webinar is specifically to address our upcoming fall 2021 and our January 2022 winter program offerings in Prince Rupert. Uh, our first trades program will be offered in September 2021 that's our fall semester. And then we will be offering welding foundations uh, for September. The second offering will be in January 2022, which is our winter semester. And we will be offering our Millwright Foundations programs. Knowing that you might have some concerns related to the pandemic, I want to briefly address COVID-19 related questions. Um, with this, you can go ahead to our coastmountaincollege.ca website and on the college's homepage, you'll see a link, and this will link out to COVID-19 updates. From here, um, you'd be able to find our safety frameworks, uh, operational planning information, and frequently asked questions. So um, if you have anything there, you can certainly get a hold of any of us or uh, refer to the website as well. Our trades programs have been operating um, throughout of the pandemic. We've been using uh, different safety protocols like social distancing, uh, reduced class sizes. Uh, we implemented a blended delivery of online and face-to-face -face programming. And as we move forward into the fall, the hope is that the model will be moving more to face-to-face, -to -face, but we will be starting with a blended model. And we'll keep everybody updated as we're guided by the BC CDC and by the public health officer. So uh, today I just want to introduce our program coordinators and instructors to you, have each trade give you an overview of their programs. And then I'll introduce our uh, ITA rep um, and he'll give you an overview of the importance and their key role within trades. So, Afterwards, I'll follow up with a little bit more information about applications, registration process, and maybe timelines for you, and then we'll conclude. So just to get started from our welding program, I'd like to introduce Bruce Need. Bruce, if you want to give a wave there, and welding coordinator and instructor. Uh, also, Tom Fedor with our welding program. Uh, Tom is our instructor for the Prince Rupert Welding Program. From our Milmer excuse me, from our Millwright program, Shauna Statt. Shauna is our program coordinator for Millwright and our lead uh, trades hand. And also Paul Wilson will be the instructor for the Prince Rupert Millwright Foundations course. So also key to uh, trades in BC is our ITA, our Industry Training Authority. Uh, our Industry Training Authority coordinates our BC skilled trade system uh, they work with employers, apprentices, industry, government, and training providers, such as the college. And some of the key responsibilities for the ITA is issuing trades credentials, supporting apprentices, funding programs, and setting up program standards. And from the Industry Training Authority, we also have with us today Sebastian Peckett. And Sebastian is our apprenticeship advisor for the Northwest. So since we'll be offering welding in the fall, I'm going to move to uh, our welding program first and uh, Bruce Need and Tom Fedor. Bruce, if you want to go ahead and start, um, give a little background and uh, start a bit of overview of the welding program. Hello, everybody. My name is Bruce Need. Uh, I've been with the college for in the, in the welding department for 16 years. Uh, I've been welding for over 25 years and such uh, different background started in a family business and ended up uh, with an opportunity at the college and I took it and here I am. Um, talk a little bit about our program. Uh, our program is a 28 week uh, duration. We plan on starting in uh, this, I believe the first week in September after the long weekends. And so that'll run into March, I believe. I'm not sure the exact end date. Um, but uh, it's a fantastic program. Uh, we are planning to run it in Prince Rupert and Terrace at the same time. And the delivery that we're, we've chosen to start with is going to be a three weeks face-to-face -face and then a one week online, so a blended delivery. 
Uh, we, we hope to run, uh, both Tom and I, uh, run this program simultaneously. So when we do our online portion, we will do that together as a group. So we'll have all the students together, both from the Rupert side and from Terrace. And we're looking forward to delivering it that way. So that'll uh, bring continuity to the program. So everyone gets delivered uh, a, a more or, um, similar, I guess you'd say. Um, yeah, that's about all I have uh, at this point. Uh, I'll pass that off to, back to uh, Tom, if you've got some more information. Hi, Tom, I'm just going to get you to unmute for us. That would be really great. See, you got to add it already. I'm Tom Thor, um, and uh, I uh, have been an instructor at this college for the same amount of time as Bruce, 16 years. Uh, prior to that, you know, I spent about 20 years working in multiple facets of industry. Uh, the last 16 years have been very rewarding, you know, teaching people our chosen trade. Uh, I'm quite excited to be returning to Prince Rupert because that's where I'm from. Uh, the first 14 years, I actually taught the uh, welding program in Prince Rupert. So we're really hoping for a good enrollment so we can run a nice solid program and, you know, potentially uh, have this program offered again in the future in Prince Rupert. Uh, it's all about numbers. So, you know, people sign up and we run a program, then, you know, it, it bodes well for the future after that. Uh, as Bruce indicated, it's a 28 week program. What students take out of this, uh, you'll come up with a very, very well rounded skill set that will ensure, you know, success uh, in the workforce. We start right from the basics of, uh, you know, safety, occupational safety, uh, things like that, right to oxyacetylene welding, gas welding. Uh, metal arc welding up to, to wire feed welding, you know, I'm not going to get overly uh, involved in explaining that stuff because all of that's available on our website. It'll give a really, really definitive overview. Uh, like Bruce indicated as well, with a blended delivery as it would be with three weeks uh, in shop time and one week online, it's quite the opportunity for everyone to really kind of meet, you know, their peers in a virtual kind of environment and to run a program simultaneously, I think it's a real benefit to students because for that matter, you're actually going to have two instructors that, you know, will be able to, uh, you know, kind of uh, assess your needs and uh, and accommodate your needs. So it, it's, it, it's quite exciting in that regard. Um, I'm going to turn it back to you for a second here, Rosalind, and uh, you can move us forward at your discretion. That sounds really good. Kind of one of the questions that usually comes up, and so Bruce, I don't know if, if you want to touch on this, or, or Tom, both of you, what kind of time commitments um, would you say there is for like the theory work and then the practical work? Um, what kind of expectations around the life and the day of a student that would really help? I'm share that out. Well, I can take this one. Um, I know right now our shop time, usually we're in the shop from say 7 to 2.30 is what we've uh, got on the schedule at the moment. Um, after that, there is some expectation that there will be some evening work on a daily basis, um, you know, for an hour or two each night. And that's for while we're in the shop. Um, we are on the online portion will, of course, being it is online, there's a, a much larger expectation or, or workload. Um, uh, exams are scheduled online sometimes. I think in the fall, we have we will have an opportunity to do a little more face-to-face -face on the testing side. Um, but um, yeah, that's basically, I, I guess when you're doing the online, usually we would meet a couple times a week and, and there's a lot of homework and expectations on our we call it, uh, everyone at the college is running on a Brightspace uh, learning or LMS or uh, learning management system. And there's a, 
what we do is we provide a checklist of the tasks that need to be completed for the week. And that could run anywhere for, uh, from a couple hours a day to, you know, two to four hours a day. Um, but uh, there is definitely a, an, an added workload when you are at, at home. So that's about all I have there. Tom, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Yeah, to kind of expand on that, uh, this year we began with a new uh, learning platform, a new curriculum. Uh, it's called CWB ACORN uh, system. With that, what we have discovered, because it's a learning curve for everyone involved in delivering this program, you know, with a new format, with the COVID, uh, and adopting a, a new curriculum, uh, it had its challenges presented to us. But what we have discovered is that the resources that are available online with this present curriculum are, uh, it's all new technology. It's really, really uh, beneficial to student learning as far as I'm, you know, that's my take on it thus far. Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, learning going like how to manage uh, our online systems, but, you know, because Bruce and I have had exposure to this, that learning curve should be lessened to a great degree for students, uh, you know, in the future, in the fall. Uh, the expectations of the program, really, I like to stress to students that we have to treat coming to this facility as a job, you know, the only difference is you're paying to come to this program opposed to going to work to get paid for it, but you have to look at it in the same light. The importance of this is you have to manage your time well, treat this as a job. The expectations are to be on time, uh, to do the work, and especially when we're in the online portions of our program, to apply oneself uh, and get that theory work done. Because when we're in the shop, I mean, we're in the shop, we're, we're doing practical uh, competencies, you know, for the entirety of the time that we're here. So ultimately, you know, accountability to oneself, accountability to the program, accountability to your peers, and uh, acting, you know, in a responsible way to achieve the, uh, the goal that, you know, you've set out for yourself. Uh, my advice to individuals, you know, choosing any trade whatsoever is to do a, a very, very thorough investigation of the trade that you're uh, potentially going to apply to. Uh, because, like, you know, the last thing we want is for people to come in and not enjoy the learning experience or to, to figure out, you know, once they've, they've entered it that this might not be for them. So, you know, do your due diligence and, uh, you know, make make a, a wise decision as to what direction you really want to move and maybe welding wouldn't be what you want to do, but welding is also an excellent pathway. It's a very, very nice complementary uh, trade and skill set that numerous people that, that uh, have gone through the program with me they've moved off in a different direction after doing the foundation welding program. They might have moved into millwright. They might have gone to heavy duty mechanic. Uh, they might have become electricians. But it's a very, very tangible skill that uh, makes an individual that much more employable. So That sounds really yeah. great. Oh, yeah, there, there's oh, lots oh. of ways to go. Thank you. I don't know if you want to address this or, or Bruce, if you want to jump in as well. When when someone um, goes through the program and they're and they're finished this, um, just the foundation level, can you speak to kind of what level you're at when you finish the program as to how that works with level one apprentice or how the foundational, the purpose behind the foundational program? Uh, when you finish the program, you come out with, um, we call it an L1 and an L2 or a level one, level two equivalent um, in the apprenticeship system, which, uh, so an L1, L2 equals a foundation, which is the program we deliver. Um, but what you come out with is a lot more practical experience than you would if you actually did the um, apprenticeship side, where a lot of more onus falls on the employer. Um, we have yet to deliver that in our area up in the north here because of our student numbers are not as high as some of the bigger centers. 
is down in the lower mainland. But um, anyways, that leads you in. You have to uh, accumulate a set number of hours, and then you can come back to the college, and you can then apply for your B level, which is going to a level three. After you accumulate all your hours for that level, you then qualify for the Red Seal. Um, so there's a, there's a big formula there, but ultimately I think no matter what trades you enter, the goal is to become uh, Red Seal certified and then you are qualified to work anywhere across Canada. Basically it's an interprovincial. Uh, um, so there's a formula which uh, if, if anyone needs more information, it's on the ITA website. Um, you know, even on that one, I, I'm not deferring at this moment, but Sebastian would have more answers to that. Um, but I'm not uh, asking him to uh, clarify that at this moment. So, so those are kind of the path pathways and what the uh, education will get you when you come out of the program. Or so. Out of the foundation. That's great. And uh, just to kind of wrap up, but Tom, if you could maybe address for us a little bit, can you talk about the diversity of the trades? You already talked a little bit about that, about maybe moving into other programs, but what type of jobs um, can you see your students doing um, out, out of their foundations or with their Red Seal? Like maybe just even a handful of different things that you've seen your students go on to. Let me unmute myself again. There we go. Technology, yeah. Uh, there's an endless uh, stream of possibilities for you know where you want to go for employment. Uh, in Prince Rupert, one of the big things there is uh, the, the local uh, fabrication, welding, machine shops. I believe we have five, six shops like that. Uh, there is a high percentage of their employees actually came through what was formerly Northwest Community College and Coast Mountain College. Uh, beyond that, a lot of students have, uh, well, back in the day, the heydays of oil and gas, they went off to Alberta, uh, worked in the oil patch. Uh, a lot of people have gone into pile driving union. Uh, gone off and uh, there's a couple of guys, they uh, became professional divers and they actually utilized the uh, skill set that they obtained through our program to apply to that. So there's, there's just countless possibilities. Uh, there's a few people that run their own company now. So it's, you know, one individual that I, I taught, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, uh, he actually is a CWB inspector at this point. So it's, you know, ultimately uh, the path you choose, like, you know, it can lead you in a lot of different directions. Uh, engineering, you know, for a matter of fact. Uh, and like Bruce and I, we ended up being instructors, so. And teaching. <laughs> yeah. Like, another avenue. Thank you both very much. It's uh, really informative, really helpful information. And it creates a great overview for anybody um, wishing to pursue a career. And again, this um, will be offered in Prince Rupert and we're looking at uh, September for the next uh, program offering both in Terrace and in Prince Rupert. Um, I think we could move on and uh, let's move on to our Millwright program. Uh, Shauna, again, is the uh, Millwright Program Coordinator, and the instructor is Paul Wilson. Shauna, maybe did you want to start off and give us your background and uh, an overview of the program? Absolutely. So, yes, I'm Shauna. I have worked for the college for approximately 14 years. I'm actually a Red Seal chef by trade. Um, which is another thing that's fantastic about all trades programs is once you move along and you get red sealed, you can move into different roles. So my red seal is what led my path into um, program coordination and as a lead hand of the trades department. So as lead hand of the trades department, I work with multiple different program areas um, in coordination, getting them set up, ready uh, to run, especially our regional programs. There's a lot of work that goes into that to get things set up. Um, and uh, yeah, just general kind of um, everything to do with the trades department, I kind of have a little a little touch into, and I'm here to offer support for our faculty and our students um, and basically all department needs for trades. Um, the Millwright program is a fantastic program. It's a 24-week uh, program for students. 
Millwright is one of the ones that is generally offered out in the region. It's not offered on our Terrace campus, so, campus, so we do do a nice rotation um, through our, our regional areas. Um, we currently have it running in Houston right now. It's going to be in Rupert. We do programs in Kitimat. Um, and it's it's commonly known as the, the jack of all trades trade. You get to learn a little bit of everything. And um, I don't think there's anything around that Paul couldn't fix. So um, yeah, I'll pass it off to Paul to talk a little bit more about the program because he is the expert. Well, that was a mouthful for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but that's that's okay. Uh, I did make a few little notes here just uh, so I don't try so I don't miss anything. Yeah, uh, mill rights. Yeah, we're we're definitely skilled uh, tradesmen. Uh, we install, dismantle, maintain, repair, reassemble. Uh, we move machinery around uh, in power plants and on construction sites. So depending on whether you want a steady job, if you want to do shutdowns, if you want to do um, uh, construction work, uh, that's all available in, in the millwright trade. Uh, uh, originally, uh, we, we were basically uh, carpenters and uh, uh, jack of all trades because in those days, everything was made out of wood. So we, uh, so we actually built uh, flour mills, saw mills, paper mills, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, we could arguably be considered one of the oldest engineering trades in the, from from the past. Uh, we we do uh, a lot of troubleshooting. Uh, we learn uh, precision uh, how to read precision equipment, which is very important: micrometers, uh, vernier calipers, uh, depth gauges, and that sort of thing. So math is very very important in this trade. Um, uh, you need to know how to uh, read diagrams, schematic drawings, uh, service manuals, and, and such. We're, we're also riggers. We rig equipment, uh, dollies, place heavy machinery and parts. Uh, uh, we fit bearings, align gears, shaft, attach motors, connect couplings, uh, belts, precise tolerances. Uh, the list uh, really uh, goes on and on and on. Uh, there's, uh, like uh, Shauna said, basically Millwright's can pretty much do anything uh, 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 that they're asked to do. Um, and the other good thing about uh, uh, mill writing, uh, as Tom said uh, in the mill er, in the welding trade, uh, it does open doors to other trades. If you find that perhaps mill writing is a little bit not your style, you can uh, move on into welding, electrical, carpentry, um, even uh, auto mechanics. I have uh, I've been doing this for a little while as well, and I've had some students uh, come to me. I don't recognize them anymore because they're a little bit older and they got the full beards and all that. Uh, but yeah, they've moved on, and uh, so, uh, there's about a half a dozen uh, from this uh, program, the foundations program, that are actually working for uh, Rio Tinto Welcan. Uh, one uh, gentleman is a heavy duty or not heavy uh, auto mechanic uh, at uh, the Ford dealership in, in Kitimat. Uh, another one is an electrician. Uh, another uh, fellow that uh, came to see me is actually a carpenter now. So um, th this trade with the uh, with your first year, you're you're actually a first year apprentice. Uh, you have some hours to make up, but it's very desirable for employers. It's a it's a really good hiring point for employers when you know that you've committed to a a, a full. Uh, a full session of uh, six, uh, 24 weeks is what it is, 24 weeks and, and you made it through, that's very, that's, that's, that's desirable for employers. It means, it actually means you can get up in the morning and, and uh, get to class. Uh, we, we teach a lot of different things other than technical stuff. Uh, behavior and attitude is very important in, in, our, in, uh, in our trade. Uh, uh, staying safe, working safe is very, is very uh, important. Staying positive on the job and in class is very important. Um, yeah, so uh, we'd probably do the first uh, month or so, uh, mostly theory, uh, just so that we can get all the safety stuff going on and we do uh, grinder safety, milling machine, lathe work, uh, welding safety and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we try to get some of that in, in, uh, in class before we actually get into the shop. And then, depending on how the students are progressing, will be will be dependent on about on how much uh, shop time I'll be giving them. 
Uh, normally, I like to do uh, half days. And then uh, if we get uh, caught up on the theory, I like to do full days on uh, Thursdays or Fridays, whatever the your last day is. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how we run the course. And uh, basically, to be totally honest with you, attitude and behavior, punctuality is uh, number one for for me when with class. If you can't stay, if you can't have good behavior and attitude, you're probably not in the right trade. Wow. That's really great, Paul. Really appreciate that. That's uh, really good, solid information, and I think you've you've answered a lot of the questions I I would have had. You know, you spoke to the commitment and the type of person it takes to get into the trade. You talked about the diversity of the trade, um, all the different types of uh, jobs that you can do within the trade or move out to into the different trades. So, would it be correct in saying it is a solid foundational trade for the trade? across the trades, really? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a true believer that uh, if you go through the Millwright program, it, it sure opens up a lot of doors for a lot of people. Uh, there's no, uh, there's, I've, I've, had, I've seen it. Uh, it, it definitely opens doors and uh, possibilities are endless. And if you like to travel, you can hang your hat pretty much anywhere you want, which I did in my career. I've been all over uh, BC, Alberta, uh, uh, Saskatchewan, uh, Winnipeg, uh, Yukon Territories, Northwest Stories, did a st stint in uh, in Russia. Uh, yeah, it just, it just depends on where I wanted to hang up my hat. And, uh, you know, I did the sawmills, I did the pulp mills, I did uh, construction, I did shutdowns. I, uh, I, I pretty much dabbled into everything. And uh, when I got tired of one thing, I just moved on to another. Always left on good terms, gave him lots of notice, uh, you know, because uh, I uh, enjoyed my career and enjoyed my life. Uh, and not only that, uh, uh, to be honest with you, you know, I had a big family and uh, the income from uh, from the uh, single income family, uh, I was able to support my uh, family throughout, throughout my career. So, you know, there's definitely a good monetary value there as well, right? Right. That really speaks volumes for sure. Um, thank you both, Sean and Paul. Really appreciate it. Helpful again, as always. Great overview. And uh, I think this is uh, just really great to help, um, you know, anybody listening or, or watching this to give them a good solid idea uh, of what we're looking to do. So what I'd like to do is, is move on and uh, again, just introduce you to speak to the Industry Training Authority role. Uh, again, Sebastian Paquette. And Sebastian is the Apprentice Advisor for the Northwest. Sebastian. Thanks, Rosalind. Um, yeah, so uh, what does an apprenticeship advisor do? Uh, basically, we support um, apprentices and employer and also uh, training providers and other stakeholders uh, so we can increase the number of people who complete their apprenticeship, who, co who get certified. So uh, I'm a problem solver. I'm answering questions. Uh, I'm there to help, uh, basically. So, um, yes, you can attest to that for you, Sebastian. You are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, if during your apprenticeship uh, you are struggling with anything, I'm your contact person uh, for the Northwest. And my uh, the def my definition of the Northwest is from Hadaguay to Houston and the Yukon border to. Uh, Bella Bella. So if you live or work in this area, I will be your contact point for the ITA. Um, I think uh, all the instructors and coordinators gave all the right information. I can just add up a little bit more, uh, a tiny bit more actually. Um, for Welder Foundation, uh, when uh, you complete and you get uh, an apprenticeship after, uh, you have your level one and two, like Bruce was saying, recognized, but also 300 hours recognized um, because of your involvement in the foundation program. And uh, for Millwright, it's, oops, sorry, uh, it, for Millwright, it's uh, 425 hours and the level one that is credited when the uh, when you complete your foundation program and you are registered as an apprentice. I can answer right away this question. You won't see it in your transcript until you register as an apprentice. 
uh, I got that question again this week. So if you're not registered, it's not there. It's normal. But as soon as you register as an apprentice, you will see everything showing up the 720 hours from your right and level one. Uh, the 425 hours, sorry, and the level one. Um, Mill right is a four level. Uh, you need to work about 6,360 hours. Uh, and welding is three level. And uh, it's 4,620 hours for uh, the apprenticeship pathway. If you decide to go modular, so uh, Bruce was talking about uh, welder B, then it's uh, 4,500 hours uh, of work experience uh, with a certified uh, welder. So both trades are awesome. Both trades are in demand in the region. Uh, Millwright in Terrace, Kitimat, Prince Rupert, lots of demand. Uh, welder all across the Northwest. Uh, and especially with the development that is happening right now in the Northwest, uh, there's going to be a lot of demand for uh, both trades. So please don't be shy. Ask your questions and see if it's for you. And if it's for you, don't hesitate. Just go for it. Great. Thank you. And um, Sebastian, did you want to share out just um, a little bit of uh, information for contact if people need to contact the, your office or possibly an email address? Yes, sure. Uh, so you can contact me by email at spaquet, so S-P-A-Q-U-E-T, at itabc.ca, or give me a call at 250-975-0569 or text me, it's a cell phone. Uh, and you can go on our website, itabc.ca, and on the front page, uh, there's a little icon saying, find your advisor, and you'll find, you'll find me there as well. Okay, that's great. Thank you again. Really important um, for everyone to understand as well that um, I, the ITA is really instrumental for anybody considering trades training or tradesperson or apprentice uh, in BC. Uh, so I just wanted to then also just mention our BC labor market outlook. Um, there is out uh, with WorkBC, so workbc.ca, you'll also see and can find the BC labor market outlook 2019 edition. And here you can find a lot of information regarding both millwright and welding. Uh, the forecasted number in jobs, uh, Sebastian, he talked about this already. Uh, the forecasted number of jobs opening for construction millwright and industrial mechanics uh, between 2018 and 2028 is in our region uh, is 3,010. And the forecast, I guess this is an overall number, the forecasted number of job openings for welders and related operators uh, between the same time period, 2018 to 2028 is 2,450. And again, it's uh, both occupations are high opportunity occupations, as Sebastian um, mentioned to you. Uh, really high demand for these jobs coming up. Uh, also in the outlook, in the labor market outlook, there is a appendix attached to that, and it's high opportunity occupations by region. So if you are looking for that information, you can find that. It reinforces everything we're saying today. And our region, uh, you can see uh, in the appendix, North Coast and the Chaco. So just that, some more information, and that's located workbc.ca if anybody needs that following information. Uh, again, I just wanted to share a little bit of information with you regarding our application process. Um, so I thought I would share my screen uh, with you just so you can see the website. So I'm just going to jump in and do that right now, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, talk over that for you. So uh, on the website, um, you'll be able to go to just direct to our website and find our, our trade section. So you just go to Program and Courses. You can go down to Trades. And from here, you'll jump onto our trades page. From here, you can go to foundations and then scroll down and you'll be able to find our um, direct information 
for millwright foundations and under that for welding foundations. I'm just gonna open up the first one here just so you have an idea. We have a full overview of the program itself. We have dates and intakes for you there, what location the program is being offered. We have a program outline and key here you might need to look at or you will need to look at for application and registration uh, to be accepted to the program are our admission requirements for each program. And then also cost and program fees are here. Under the overview, if you want to apply to the program, you can just click on apply to Coast Mountain College. This is within each of the of the information uh, pages for you. You can go ahead and jump out to each of those pages. Otherwise, you can go to our admissions section of the website and you can just become a student in three easy steps and you can apply and register um, online from, from our web pages. A couple of things, if you're at a different location and you're looking for campus locations, we also have listed the different campus locations online for you. And there's phone numbers as well as um, more direct information and, and how, to, how to reach out to us. So the only other thing here that I wanted to focus on is the, there's a different process with, within the application um, set up for you. We have an application and there is no fee for the college application. You can apply at any time for the welding and for the Millwright program. We suggest, we highly recommend at the college you apply now because what happens is this pro process takes time and if you're looking for funding, no matter how that funding um, might be, whether it's band sponsorship, bursaries or scholarships, whatever that funding is, Canada Student Loan, these all have deadlines and they all take time to put into place for you. They will also be looking that you've been accepted into the program. So first step, you apply, go online, apply for the program. Then there's a second step. Once you're accepted by our admissions department, you need to register and pay a $100 non-refundable uh, deposit. That is where you now have held a seat and you pay your full tuition, 10 business days has to be paid by 10 business days prior to the program or you could be giving up your seat. And that includes anyone who's looking for sponsorship. It is the student responsibility to make sure your sponsor has the paperwork to the college 10 business days prior to the start of the program so that you don't lose your seat. So just there's two stages, you can apply at any time. And then when you register, our registration for fall is expected to be open in May. So uh, you can apply now but you will register and pay your $100 deposit when we open for fall registration, which will be, uh, we're looking, I think, May 1st this year. Just one, one more small note, if you are a high school student or if you're a parent, the process is different if you're looking at dual credit programs. For the dual credit programs, you go direct to your high school trades coordinator or counseling department. Um, you do not follow the regular college application process. All of that is taken care of directly through your high school and there is a separate application process for dual credit. So uh, just again, uh, the information for all of us is on the website where I showed you each trade. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can link uh, to Tom's information, you can link to Bruce's information, Paul or Shauna or myself, all of our information is direct off the contacts on that trades, uh, on the trade web pages uh, of our website. Um, again, about the campuses, if you're looking for specific information for um, campus locations for Prince Rupert, all on the website. And if you need to send us anything, you can send all information to us via email at info at coastmountaincollege.ca. I wanna thank everybody for participating today. We really appreciate it. And um, we hope that the information we've all provided out to you today is helpful to connect you to your desired pathway. 
and thank you from all of us at Coast Mountain College.